Hello, and welcome to my honors thesis presentation. My name is Tolan Blasco, and today I will be presenting Chinook Salmon Recovery on the Post Dam Elwha River. We'll begin with some background on the drainage. The Elwha River is a Puget Sound tributary that flows into the Strait of Juan de Fuca. The river is 72 kilometers long and, with tributaries included, provides over 125 kilometers of spawning habitat to anadromous species. It historically contained rich anadromous migrations, including all five species of Pacific salmon, steelhead, bull trout, dolly varden, sea run cutthroat trout, and Pacific lamprey. The salmon were a keystone species for a wide and complex trophic web that ranged from top predators such as bears and wolves down to primary producers and invertebrates. The river flows through the historic home of the Lower Elwha Clallam tribe and today lies within the boundaries of the Olympic National Park. In the late 1800s to early 1900s, the Olympic Peninsula was growing in both population and industry creating a rise in homes, urbanization, and demand for dependable electricity. The Elwha was seen as a potential source of hydropower. A Canadian entrepreneur named Thomas Aldwell developed and financed the Elwha Dam's construction in 1913. Construction of the Glines Canyon Dam followed in 1927. Two reservoirs formed as a result of the dam's construction, Lake Aldwell behind the Elwha River Dam and Lake Mills behind the Glines Canyon Dam. These reservoirs trapped sediment and woody debris, prohibiting both from flowing through the lower reaches of the Elwha. Neither dam had any fish passage capabilities, blocking all anadromous species from accessing the middle and upper reaches of the river. This restriction of habitat greatly impacted the Chinook salmon on the Elwha River. Chinook, commonly called king salmon, are the largest sized but least abundant Pacific salmonid. They are a popular sport fish, fondly called Taiyi Chinook by recreational anglers when they reach 30 pounds or larger. They inhabit a wide native range, from the Ventura River in Southern California to tributaries of the Arctic Ocean. Chinook uniquely display two different juvenile life histories that are important for this presentation. Stream type Chinook will spend up to a year in fresh water before beginning their ocean migration, spending little time in the estuary when transitioning into the salt. Ocean-type Chinook typically start their saltwater migration soon after hatching and spend multiple weeks rearing in the estuary before continuing out to the ocean. Chinook in the Elwha River were famous both for their large body size and impressive migrations. Before construction of the two dams, the Elwha boasted Chinook runs that contained massive individuals, thought to be the largest bodied Chinook observed outside of Alaska. Chinook were said to reach 100 pounds in this system, with size selected for as they navigated a 72-kilometer spawning migration that led them over waterfalls, through fast currents, up steep grades, all the while avoiding voracious predators. The upper reaches of the Elwha provided ideal habitat for stream-type life history. Upon dam construction, access to the Elwha was limited to the 8 kilometers below the Elwha Dam cutting off a majority of both main stem and tributary spawning habitat. Chinook population numbers and individual size decreased rapidly after this, with hatchery programs implemented to prevent extinction and allow for recreational angling opportunities. In 2008, nearly 100 years after the Elwha Dam began operations, the Lower Elwha Clallam tribe evaluated the population status for the anadromous species in the Elwha. Spring Chinook were identified as critically low or extinct, with summer fall run Chinook listed as critically low with hatchery supplementations. Both runs were listed as abundant before dam construction. Action became seen as necessary in the early 2000s, as the United States Department of the Interior reported total fish numbers in the river to be around 1% of their pre-dam values. NOAA Fisheries identified that impacts from the dams caused a 90% reduction in salmonid abundance specifically. The 8 kilometers below the Elwha Dam had become coarse and degraded from nearly 100 years of limited sediment flow. 
Recovery planning culminated in the 1992 Elwha River Ecosystem and Fisheries Restoration Act, which called for the complete restoration of the Elwha River Ecosystem and native anadromous fisheries. Demolition work began, and the Elwha Dam was removed in 2011, followed by the Glines Canyon Dam in 2014. To this day, it is the largest dam removal project in world history. The removal of the two dams triggered a fluvial sediment pulse comparable to the Mount St. Helens eruption, releasing around two-thirds of the trapped sediment and woody debris behind the dams, smoothing the lower reaches of the river. Around 90% of the released sediment traveled to the mouth of the Elwha, growing the delta by 60 hectares. This picture shows the formation of the delta at the mouth of the Elwha as a result of dam removal. The left frame was taken in 2011 before the Elwha dam was removed, with little to no sediment buffer as the river flows into the ocean. The frame on the right was taken in 2014, after the Glines Canyon dam was removed, showing a large increase in sediment and complexity. While delta formation resulting from dam removal can be shown in a photo, the recovery of the Chinook salmon in the river requires a deeper investigation. For my honors thesis, I performed a literature review to research how the removal of the dams impacted Chinook salmon in the Elwha River, as well as their current status and recovery timeline. Studying and understanding impacts to salmon on the Elwha River is important, as dam removals become an increasingly mainstream restoration solution. After the dams were removed, management, monitoring, and preservation became the top priorities for scientists studying the novel ecosystem. After dam removal completion in 2014, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service released the guidelines for monitoring and adaptively managing restoration of Chinook salmon and steelhead on the Elwha River. These guidelines included four phases, triggered by specific values and observations. The first post-dam phase is focused on preservation, with a population expectation of 950 or less individuals. The preservation phase assumes no Chinook are observed spawning above historical dam locations and contain no natural to hatchery spawning ratio requirement. The goals of this phase are to prevent extinction while preserving genetic and life history diversity. The second phase is focused on recolonization, triggered by a population of 950 to 4,340 observed spawning above the previous location of the Elwha Dam, and a 95 to 5 ratio of natural to hatchery spawning individuals. The goals of this phase are for Chinook to consistently access habitat above the dams, observe successful spawning and smolt production, and for Chinook to reach 43% of their intrinsic potential. Phase 3 is local adaptation, triggered by a population of 4,340 to 10,000. Observed spawning above both dam locations, almost all fish spawning naturally, and an observable increase in stream type Chinook. This phase aims to increase life history diversity and for the Chinook to reach 86% of their intrinsic potential. The final phase is triggered by a viable natural population of over 10,000 individuals. In this phase, Chinook will be accessing and spawning in all reaches of the river, hatchery programs will be ceased, and all triggers will be met consistently. By achieving this phase, the Chinook will have realized 100% of their intrinsic potential. The post-dam recovery process is a long timeline, with setbacks after dam removal inhibiting aspects of Chinook recovery. The Elwha experienced periodic lethal turbidity levels until 2015, with a rock slide at the location of the Glines Canyon Dam occurring that same year. The rock slide blocked access to the upper reaches and was unable to be removed before the Chinook spawned that fall, creating hazardous conditions for Chinook attempting to swim through the Glines Canyon to spawn. The Elwha also experienced years of low returns after removal. 2017 marking the lowest point when just over 500 Chinook were estimated in the WDFW Hatchery Escapement Report. This led to some criticizing the dam removal, including a 2018 piece from the Washington Policy Center stating that, 
Five years after the Elwha Dam was removed, there has been no benefit to salmon, citing continued reliance on hatchery production. Other criticisms included road damage as a result of dam removal, which contributes to the limited access in the middle and upper reaches of the Elwha, making it difficult to use traditional data collection methods. However, the Chinook salmon in the Elwha have shown signs of rapid recolonization. An effective method for tracking and observing Chinook recolonization are walking surveys, which are deployed in all reaches of the river. In 2012, during the first Chinook spawn after the Elwha Dam was removed, 203 reds were observed above the original site, with 1,310 observed in 2014. There were three reds observed above the site of the Glines Canyon Dam during the first spawn after removal. With the limited access to the middle reaches and backcountry roadless areas of the upper reaches, environmental DNA, or eDNA, has emerged as the most effective way to track Chinook recolonization. The use of eDNA has identified presence of Chinook as far up as the Hayes River, a tributary that flows into the Elwha 51.4 kilometers from the mouth. The use of eDNA has also identified presence of Chinook in tributaries that are naturally impassable to salmon, which I will discuss in a few slides. The middle and upper reaches of the Elwha are better suited for Chinook spawning, shown here in this graph of suitable spawning temperatures during Chinook migration and spawning months in a given year. Days with suitable temperature are shown in white, with unsuitable days shown in gray. The lower Elwha, where the Chinook were relegated for nearly 100 years with the dams in place, has more days with unsuitable spawning temperatures than it does suitable, while the middle and upper reaches have a high majority of days with suitable spawning temperatures. Consistent access to the middle and upper reaches as a result of dam removal provides the Chinook with high quality spawning habitat. After reviewing primary literature and agency reports centered around dam removal and Chinook recovery on the Elwha River, it is evident that restoration of the fishery and ecosystem is still in its infancy. With a five-year generation period, the first generation of Chinook that have experienced no dams, lethal turbidity, or natural barriers such as the Glines Canyon rock slide will finish their migration this year. The Chinook returning to spawn are the first to have access to their historic range. Engineered log jams, shown in the Elwha in this picture, have demonstrated to provide safe and quality habitat for out-migrating juvenile smolts. Chinook in the Elwha are not experiencing any angling pressure in their freshwater migrations due to a fishing moratorium that is in place until July 2021. However, despite these encouraging signs, there is still a heavy reliance on hatchery supplementation to keep the Chinook population stable. To further my research, I set up interviews with scientists in the field to discuss lingering questions I still had about Chinook recovery on the post dam Elwha. Of those I reached out to, Dr. Joe Anderson with the WDFW and Jeffrey Duda from USGS agreed to meet on Microsoft Teams. Dr. Anderson, who monitors out-migrating smolt and is involved with the walking surveys, provided me with new perspectives on the continued hatchery reliance and slow increase in stream-type Chinook life history displays. We discussed how it is more accurate to view the removal of the rock slide as the beginning date of Chinook recovery and how multiple generations of unaltered migrations will most likely bring along a rise in the stream type life history ratio. Dr. Anderson has already started observing an increase in outmigrating stream type smolt in the river's lower reaches. The high elevation upper reaches of the Elwha have ideal stream type habitat and Chinook are just now beginning to access those areas. We discussed the potential lift of the recreational fishing moratorium in July and agreed as both passionate anglers that we hoped it would get extended. Salmon runs like Chinook that are in their genesis of recovery will be extremely sensitive to angling pressure along with the potential human impacts on the ecosystem and surrounding habitat. Jeffrey Duda leads the eDNA monitoring project on the Elwha, and he mentioned that identifying presence of Chinook in upper reach tributaries using eDNA is a strong indicator that Chinook are beginning to recover. 
we discussed Chinook salmon's role as a keystone species in the ecosystem, which was supported by Duda's team finding positive tests for Chinook in inaccessible tributaries they originally designated as negative controls for the study. They found that Chinook carcasses were being transported, most likely by birds such as bald eagles, and ending up in streams salmon could never reach by swimming. The carcass's decomposition provides nutrients to the surrounding ecosystem. Duda mentioned the surprising release of small woody debris from behind the dams during the sediment pulse after removal. He said the release of this debris completely surprised those monitoring the sediment dynamics and to this day there is uncertainty for the effect this woody debris release had on the lower reaches of the Elwha. Duda said it will be important to be prepared to study this on future dam removal projects. Lastly, we discussed the recovery timeline for Chinook salmon and how it will be likely at least 100 years before we observe naturally viable populations. After examining primary literature, dissecting agency reports, and performing interviews with scientists in the field, I was able to conclude that recolonization is the most encouraging sign of Chinook recovery. Chinook have accessed reaches of the river at a rapid rate and have met recolonization triggers for phase three of the monitoring guidelines. I concluded that the sediment release after dam removal was successful and beneficial to Chinook recovery, as the estuary and delta were restored to their historic size. I concluded that hatchery programs are still necessary, with only about 5% of current Chinook populations spawning naturally. With recolonization of the middle and upper reaches and Dr. Anderson's smolt observations in the lower reaches, I concluded that stream-type Chinook are increasing in the river and should continue to as Chinook recolonize farther towards the headwaters. Finally, I learned that monitoring the recovery of the Chinook on the Elwha River requires patience and dedication to responsible management practices. With this year marking the first generation that experienced no dams, artificial barriers, or lethal turbidity, the next decade will bring insight and clarity on the recovery timeline. Continued dedication to monitoring and managing this recovery is imperative to its success, and for the potential to see a river system completely restored. Thank you.